Hey, what up all my tooth doctors and doctresses and welcome to another episode of the Tooth Factory. Today we're going to begin with pharmacology's lecture number one on autonomic nervous system with parasympathetic and sympathetic systems explained. So like, share and subscribe and head over to our Facebook for the documents to be printed. Have fun! So without much ado, let's dive into the first lecture of pharmacology at the Tooth Factory. Today's lesson includes central nervous system, specifically autonomous nervous system. That includes parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. Third, we are going to discuss about neurotransmitters, receptors, and then some thumb rules about the autonomous nervous system. So, to understand the system, we need to understand where did the autonomous nervous system derive from. The nervous system has two central and peripheral parts. Central divides into brain and spinal cord, which is not today's topic. We are going to discuss about one of the peripheral, which is autonomic nervous system, and the other is somatic. Autonomic nervous system has both sympathetic and parasympathetic parts. The sympathetic part of the nervous system is also known as the adrenergic. Actually, the adrenergic is known as the sympathomimetic system. It is designed for fright, flight, and fight systems, designed for emergencies of the bodily systems where they draw blood to the core organs and the center of the body. Major neurotransmitters of the sympathetic nervous system are epinephrine and norepinephrine. Major receptors are alpha and beta adrenergic receptors. The drugs of this system are in the adrenergic system for more. Next, the second half of the autonomous nervous system is parasympathetic nervous system. It is also known as the cholinergic. To be precise, the cholinergic is known as the parasympathomimetic system. It is for rest and digest as it conserves all body processes. The main neurotransmitters of this system are acetylcholine and the main receptors are muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. Please see the cholinergic drugs for this system. Important to note that sympathetic and parasympathetic actions are usually opposite. Let's begin with neurotransmitters. There are two neurotransmitters. There's norepinephrine and there's acetylcholine. Norepinephrine is designated to the sympathetic nervous system. Acetylcholine is designated to parasympathetic nervous system. What are receptors? Receptors are those that belong in target organs and they accept these neurotransmitters in order to do the action intended. So adrenergic receptors which are alpha and beta are designated to sympathetic nervous system and muscarinic and nicotinic are designated to parasympathetic nervous system but sometimes in sympathetic as well. Adrenergic receptors are mediated or stimulated by norepinephrine and muscarinic and nicotinic are mediated or regulated by acetylcholine. Now what is a synapse? A synapse is when a central nervous system releases neurotransmitters through a synaptic neuron which is called preganglionic neuron because it comes before the ganglions and then a ganglion relays that message through another neuron known as postganglionic neuron to a target organ such as a heart. Now the correlation between the receptors and neurotransmitters in a synapse. Every neurotransmitter from central nervous system to the ganglions will always be acetylcholine. Is always acetylcholine. Any neuron from ganglion to the target organs could either be acetylcholine or could either be norepinephrine depending on the system and the action intended. Now let's take a look at the specifics. The parasympathetic nervous system where central nervous system releases acetylcholine in the preganglionic neuron and then it arrives at the ganglion. The ganglion receives it by the nicotinic receptors. Acetylcholine is then traveled through the postganglionic neuron to the target organs and accepted by muscarinic receptors. It is important to 
Note at this point that all ganglionic receptors will always be nicotinic and be mediated by acetylcholine. In the parasympathetic, the postganglion neuron will always be acetylcholine, will never be norepinephrine. Moving on to the sympathetic nervous system, where the central nervous system will release a neuron message with an acetylcholine to the ganglion in the preganglionic neuron. Again, nicotinic receptors will always receive it at the ganglion and then shoots a message in the postganglionic neuron to the target organs using norepinephrine, sympathetic norepinephrine. As it is norepinephrine, the target organs will receive it by adrenergic on most cases. But, same central nervous system to ganglion, to ganglion to target organs with a muscarinic receptors in the sympathetic nervous system is usually at sweat glands only. Note, again, parasympathetic is always acetylcholine. Sympathetic could either be norepinephrine or acetylcholine. So just as a revision, autonomic nervous system is divided into parasympathetic nervous system and sympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic goes through acetylcholine to a muscarinic receptors at target organs such as heart, glands or muscles. Sympathetic nervous system can use norepinephrine, acetylcholine, epinephrine and acetylcholine for nicotinic. The receptors for sympathetic nervous system are alpha adrenergic, beta 1 adrenergic by norepinephrine, heart, gland and muscles are the target organs, then acetylcholine to muscarinic again only sweat glands, epinephrine for all alpha and beta including beta 2 to the adrenal medulla only and then acetylcholine for neuro muscular junctions for skeletal muscles only. The thumb rules to understand are parasympathetic is always muscarinic or nicotinic receptors at target organs. Sympathetic is always either alpha, beta, nicotinic, muscarinic at target organs. All preganglionic neurotransmitters are acetylcholine. All ganglionic receptors are nicotinic. Norepinephrine never acts on the beta 2 adrenergic receptors. Skeletal muscles do not have a ganglion. They have a direct route from the CNS through the neuromuscular junctions at the target organs. The beta 2 is always stimulated by epinephrine, not norepinephrine. Here are the thumb rules and hope you learned something new today.